Okay. Hello, welcome to the, uh, the webinar for the ANSCA Drum Kit Syllabus with Mark Murphy. Um, it's great to see so many of you that have registered. We've got teachers from Australia, New Zealand, Malaysia, Singapore, and Indonesia. So it's great to see a, a widespread there. Mark Murphy has, has had a long association with ANSCA. He's been a, a student, a teacher, and then an ANSCA examiner. And he's also the author of the Drum Kit Syllabus. Um, so we uh, very much appreciate everything Mark does for ANSCA. He's a fine musician and a fine performer to boot. I hope you enjoyed today's performance. Thank you. Thanks very much, Jamie. Uh, today I'm going to provide an overview and introduction to the ANSCA drum kit syllabus. ANSCA began in 1983. It was formed because there was no examination board at that time that catered for modern music styles. If you wanted to do exams in Australia at that time, it was classical exams or no exams. ANSCA's vision was, and still is, to stay in touch with modern music styles while respecting the history and importance of the styles of the past. ANSCA is involved in the Australian, New Zealand and Southeast Asian regions. ANSCA has plenty of resources and information available to help teachers navigate the system. The first resource worth mentioning is the examination handbook. This handbook is released every year and updated every year. It's a free download from the ANSCA website and it provides uh, current prices for exams, enrolment dates, exam dates and important rules and regulations. So that particular publication is quite handy for us teachers. When researching and preparing for an exam, the foundation of the whole system is the syllabus. This is one of the most important documents that you will need as a teacher when preparing for drum exams. The drum kit syllabus is supported by a complete set of resource books. There is a technical workbook. We have a sight reading and oral testing book. A general knowledge book. And there is the drum kit performance series, which uh, includes list piece options from uh, preliminary grade all the way up through to the diploma level. So there's plenty of resources there that can be helpful for teachers when they're preparing their students. The drum kit syllabus have, consists of 11 stages or levels, starting with the introductory level, moving through to the preliminary grade, grades one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and the performer, sorry, associate performer diploma level. Now what we'll do next is we'll have a little bit of a look at the requirements for each level and I'll explain a few things about each level bit by bit. With the, the, the lowest or simplest level is the introductory level. This particular level was designed to be very simple to help young students and young beginners uh, be introduced to the system of exams and how to deal with it all. So it's really, really basic this particular level. In this level, there are four sections, technical work, list pieces, oral tests, and general knowledge. With the technical work, this is the only exam level where the student is allowed to have the book open in front of them to do their rudiments. Every other level, the rudiments need to be performed by memory. So that helps make it easy for the young children. With the list pieces, the student needs to prepare two list pieces for this particular level. The language that ANSCA uses for their list pieces is lists A and B and C or D. So only two lists for this particular level. Now it's really important when we're preparing our students that we only provide one piece from each category. So one piece from the list A category, one list from the list B category. Occasionally a student will turn up for an exam with two list A's or two list B's, so you don't want to make that error if possible. With the oral tests, uh, by the way, I must mention that the list pieces for this particular grade are all inside this book as well, all the options that you can choose from. 
The oral testing section is also inside this book and there are some examples that you can work through with your students to prepare them. Um, general knowledge, again, is listed inside this book. At this sort of level, the general knowledge will be very simple and the general knowledge is also a verbal part of the examination. So the examiner will ask a student a question. For example, what's that? It's a bar line. What's that? It's a quarter note. The student will just verbally answer those questions. There is no numerical result at this particular level. The student will receive an assessment result only. The assessment results include not satisfactory, pass, pass with merit and honours. So not satisfactory of course being the lowest result and honours being the highest possible result for this level. With the preliminary grade, there are five sections within this level. Technical, sorry, technical work, list pieces, sight reading, oral tests, and general knowledge. Now with the technical work, there are more specific requirements at this level compared to the introductory level. They're all listed here inside the technical workbook and as well in the syllabus. So it's quite simple to find out what the requirements are. You just need to read them carefully. So for example, the rudiments need to be performed by memory at that level and there's counting requirements, etc. So all the information is there, you just have to look for it. There are three list pieces required for the preliminary level, known as lists A, B and C. Um, there is a variety of options in the syllabus. You don't have to use the Drum Kit Performance Series. A lot of teachers do just use this type of series because these books were designed to enable students to just purchase one book to get through the exam instead of purchasing three or four books. But it's not compulsory. There are loads of options for the students to choose from. Now, with the sight reading, that's the first time at preliminary level, it's the first time that sight reading has been included in the syllabus. All of the information that you need to know is in the syllabus. And in addition to that, there are examples of the preliminary grade sight reading here in this oral testing, sight reading and oral testing book. Um, the general knowledge again is a verbal section. Now with the marking system, the student will receive an receive a numerical result as well as an assessment result for this level. The marking system is set out so that 0 to 59 marks is not satisfactory, 60 to 74 marks will give an assessment result of pass, 75 to 84 is a credit, 85 to 94 is honours, 95 to 100 is first class honours. Now the weighting of the marks is as follows. The technical work section will receive 20 marks. Lists A, B and C will receive 18 marks each, so three times 18. Sight reading is 10 marks. Oral test is eight marks. And general knowledge is eight marks. Moving on to the grade one section, uh, the grade one exam. There are five sections within this level. Technical work, list piece, sight reading, oral test and general knowledge. Um, with the list pieces, there will be three pieces, lists A, B and C for this level. And the technical work, sight reading, oral test and general knowledge are as previously mentioned. Uh, the marking system is identical to the preliminary grade. At grade two level, there are five sections again within this level. Technical work, three list pieces, A, B, C and D, sight reading, oral test and general knowledge. The marking system is identical to previously mentioned. Grade three, there are five sections. Technical work, lists A, B and C, sight reading, oral tests and general knowledge. And again, the marking system is the same as preliminary grades one and two. Now, at grade four level, things change quite significantly. There are five sections within the grade five level. Technical work will include the 26 standard rudiments uh, to be learned by memory, etc. In addition to that, within the technical work, the student will need to present one snare drum study or snare drum solo if you prefer. Uh, that little addition sometimes gets overlooked by some teachers and students, so just be aware there's an extra snare piece that's needed within the technical work section. 
Another change at this level is that from grade four onwards, there are four list pieces to be performed. List A, B, C, and D. Previously, there were three pieces or two, now it's four pieces. So again, sometimes that list D piece, not often, but occasionally that can be overlooked. That can be quite distressing for a student if they haven't got the right amount of list pieces prepared. There's a sight reading section, oral testing and general knowledge. Now the weighting of the marking is a little different for grade four because there are four uh, list pieces. So the technical work will be marked out of 18 now as opposed to 20 for the previous grades. The list pieces will now be marked out of 14 marks as opposed to 18 for the lower grades. Sight reading remains at 10 marks, oral tests are eight marks and the general knowledge remains at eight marks. The grade five framework is same as grade four. There are five sections, technical work, list pieces, sight reading, oral tests and general knowledge. With the technical work, it's worth mentioning that the student will need to perform a selection of 14 movements as well as two snare drum studies at this level. So they're just little layers that you've got to look out for in the syllabus if you are preparing a student for an exam. So at grade four level, it was one snare study. At grade five level, it's two snare studies. With grade six, there are five sections again. Technical work. With the technical work, uh, there are no rudiments at grade six level. The student will perform two snare drum studies. Now those snare drum studies will have many of the previously learned rudiments woven inside the, the study to put in the musical context. So it might sound easy initially that there are no rudiments, but they've learned a hell of a lot of rudiments by that level anyway, so we put them into a snare drum solo. There are four list pieces at grade six level, lists A, B, C and D. Sight reading, oral tests and general knowledge. The marking system is the same as for grade four and five. Grade seven, there are five sections. Technical work, again, there is no room. It's just two snare drum solos or studies. Uh, there are four list pieces, A, B, C and D. Sight reading, oral tests and general knowledge. The marking system is the same as previously mentioned. At grade eight, there are five sections. Again, with the technical work, there are only two snare drum studies, no rudiments required. Four list pieces, A, B, C, and D. Sight reading, oral tests, and general knowledge, and the marking system remains as previously mentioned. With the associate performer diploma, there is no technical work. Four list pieces, A, B, C, and D. No sight reading, no oral tests, but there is general knowledge and the general knowledge is, is a significant factor within this exam. There will be no numerical result for this particular level. It will simply be, uh, uh, the student will be awarded an assessment result of not satisfactory or a pass or fingers crossed honours. Honours is the highest mark you can achieve for that particular level. Now that little summary really gives you the nuts and bolts of the syllabus of how it works. There are, however, a few extra layers to the syllabus that I would like to explain to you. So up to this point, I've explained the overall structure of the syllabus without complicating and sidetracking with some of the trickier elements. With grades one, two, and three, in the list B section, a student has the option to perform a piece that is not listed in the syllabus. This option was created to allow the student to choose a piece that might be current, but didn't exist at the time of writing the current syllabus, because the syllabus lasts for three years each time before it's updated. So that's the purpose of that particular free choice element. It just gives a little bit of freedom for the teachers and students in case something new has popped up. Uh, with grades four, five, and six, the list D piece can be a free choice. That is, not listed in the syllabus. It can be something from list A, B and C or it can be something from any other text that's not listed in the syllabus and it's up to the teacher and student to make sure that, that particular free choice is of the relevant standard for that grade. That's very important. This again gives students and teachers flexibility with their selections. The regulations re re that are related to that selection are all listed in the syllabus for you. Grades seven and eight 
have a list D group of options that are, that are written down, or the student can ignore those options if they want to for list D and choose a free choice. Again, just give you more flexibility. One of my favourite features in the syllabus is the option for a student to create their own compositions. This option is available for grades 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and the diploma level. The rules and guidelines are listed in the syllabus. Please keep in mind that the piece must be fully notated. Once upon a time I did a grade 6 exam and the student came in with the original composition and handed me a chart with one bar notated and said, well, that's the vibe of my solo name, you know? I said, okay, that's, you know, that's, did you notate it? And he said, no, no, that's the vibe. Okay, anyway, he played really well. It was a great performance, but he just notated one bar and just had a ball and had fun. It must be notated if you want to go down that path. It's not meant to be an easy path or a cop-out. It's meant to allow creativity within the system. But I really do enjoy the original element, being able to create your own compositions. Uh, I'd like to chat briefly about backing tracks. Students have the option of choosing a piece that has a backing track. This is optional, not compulsory. The Drum Kit Performance Series has backing tracks available for some of the solos. In, in the syllabus, they're marked with an asterisk. The backing tracks are available uh, for free from ANSCA. There are three ways that you can access the audio files. One is you can download them from ANSCA's website. Two is they're available on ANSCA's SoundCloud. And the third option is that they're available on ANSCA's YouTube channel. So there are plenty of options to get those audio files. There are two separate audio files provided for each track. One is a demo with the drum part included. The second version has no drums but has a click track installed. The click track version is the correct file to use in an exam. The version with the drums is purely just a courtesy for teachers and students to hear how it all goes together. In addition to that, I've provided a film performance of every backing track on my Facebook page. So if you go to Mark, on, go on to Facebook and go to Mark Murphy Drummer and scroll around, you'll find absolutely every backing track with a film performance of that. That might be helpful for students to select their tracks or just understand how it all works to see it and hear it. Now, another layer to the syllabus is uh, the theory requirements. Now, if you're doing a drum exam, a practical drum exam, for introductory, preliminary, grades one, two, three, four, and five, you don't need any theory qualifications of any kind. In that situation, you can sit your exam and you will receive, just a moment, please, you'll receive a written report. This is all the way up to grade five. You'll get a written report as well as that, you will receive a certificate for all the way up to grade five. Now, the following requisites and prerequisites apply to the higher grades. Grade six, the requisite is grade one theory. Grade seven, the requisite is grade two theory. And grade eight, the requisite is grade three theory. The diploma prerequisite is a credit or higher in grade three music theory. That is 75% or higher as the result. Now, just to expand on that a little, if, uh, if you sit your grade six drum exam, you can still sit the exam and receive the report, but you won't receive your certificate until you've successfully passed grade one music theory. The certificate will be withheld until that point. Now, if the, the same goes for grade seven and grade eight, you can still sit the drum exam, but you won't get your certificate. There's a five year period after you've sat the drum exam in which you must obtain the theory result or qualification. So there's plenty of time to deal with it. Uh, at the diploma level, as I mentioned, you must get a credit or higher in grade three theory. So let's make a scenario where a student sits their grade three theory exam and they get 71%. That will qualify them for their grade eight drum certificate. 
but it won't qualify them to sit for the final drum exam. They would have to therefore resit the grade three theory and get a result of 75% or higher. And that needs to be achieved prior to sitting the drum exam. Um, at this point in time, drummers have to do the same theory system as uh, other musicians such as piano players and guitarists and singers and violin players. Um, I'm pleased to inform you that at some stage in the future, ANSCA will be releasing a series of publications and a theory syllabus that is suitable for drummers. And in that system, there will be much less focus on melody and harmony than scales and the things that piano players need to do. And it will be more heavily focused on rhythmic structures and things that are really closely related to what we will do as drummers in our journey. So I can't give you a time frame on that, but it is, it is coming, it is going to happen, that's a reality. Now, another layer to the exam system is um, the performance only option. Uh, grades one to eight and the final level allow this option. The pathway is labelled drum kit performance. In this system, there is no technical work no sight reading, no oral tests, and no general knowledge. It's purely a performance of four list pieces. That means four pieces for every level. In the lower grades, grades one, two, and three, in the standard syllabus, there are three list pieces that you need to play. If you choose the performance only pathway, you must perform four, four uh, pieces even at the lower grades. Each of those performances will be uh, rated at 25 percent of the 100 percent mark so four pieces at 25 marks each this option provides music examinations for drummers that just want to play most serious musicians understand the importance of developing all areas of their growth some students however don't have the time or the interest for such matters so this option is available for those type of people the report and certificate will state performance on the certificate, which means the holder of the qualification won't earn the same level of credibility as the holder of a standard certificate. It just provides another option for those type of people. Uh, another point I'd like to mention to you is uh, on my YouTube channel, there's a performance of absolutely every solo that is in the list drum kit performance series. So this is all the list pieces that you use in exams. So all the way from prelim up to diploma, absolutely every piece that is listed on the syllabus, there's a performance of that. It's just a solo performance. It hasn't got the backing tracks. I find that a useful tool when I'm teaching. I can, if I'm just three quarters of the way through teaching a list A piece to a student, I just write down a list B option and say, go home and have a look on the YouTube have a think about which one you think you'd like to learn. It saves them the lesson time. And they can also study those pieces at home if they're really stuck on something. Um, now, another point I need to mention as well is with the syllabus, as previously mentioned, it's updated every three years. One really handy thing that ANSP has done is that there's like a changeover period of one year. So this particular syllabus is 2022 to 24. So if I was preparing a student in 2024 for an exam, and I just couldn't quite get them over the line to do that exam, they can still work off the exact 224 syllabus and sit their exam in 225. So there's a 12 month changeover period where both syllabuses are active. So I found, find that fairly handy as well. Um, another layer that and still offers is video exams. They can be a little bit tricky depending on what region you're in and what level you're doing. So I won't go into all the logistics of that now, but just be aware there are video exams available. And if you're interested in that option, speaking to someone in the, in the office, in the admin department is the wisest place to go. It's, it's a little bit above my pay scale. Um, I'd like to move on to sharing some of the my thoughts on the pros and cons of doing exams. Like most things in life, there, there are positives and negatives to them. So some of the, the only two negatives I can think of are that 
doing exams cost money, so people need to be aware of that. It's not a free service, so that's a reality and a negativity in some people's opinions, I would assume. It also takes discipline to do exams properly. So I personally have some students that just don't have that discipline. It's just a hobby. They don't really want to take it that seriously. They just want to bash a drum kit. I don't even talk about exams with those type of students because it's not designed for absolutely everybody. Now, the only are two negatives I can think of personally. The positives or the pros that, that I've experienced through my journey as a teacher are that uh, ex examinations can pro provide formal qualifications. Qualifications are helpful with applying for positions in school bands or school orchestras, music programs, getting into university with the music courses, and eventually with teaching jobs. It can be a bit tricky trying to get a teaching job if you have no qualifications on paper. Um, exams give students and parents great satisfaction. That, that's one of the big ones in, in my personal experience as a teacher, that when a student achieves a goal that they set out to do, and when the parents see a result on paper for the, the money and that they're spending on lessons, etc., it just brings a lot of joy and a lot of satisfaction. So I find that one a fairly powerful motive for me to talk about exams with some of my students. Um, exams can provide a structured set of goals, which uh, can provide direction and a framework for students and a definite sense of achievement as they move up each step. And it can, can reduce the feeling for some students that they might be just sort of going in circles and not growing. And they keep seeing that they're ticking the boxes and the levels, gives them that sense of direction. Um, doing exams can force the student to study a variety of concepts, styles and genres that they otherwise might not want to do. Um, as we all know as musicians and drummers, being able to cope with a variety of styles is really important to getting gigs and keeping gigs. Um, exams can help create a rounded and complete student so that they're forced to do some areas that they otherwise might have ignored. For teachers, doing exams can help uh, when potential new customers inquire about drum lessons. I very, very regularly get uh, an inquiry from someone saying, you know, where do you live and how much do you charge? And within the first five questions, quite often is, do you prepare students for exams? It's very handy to be able to say yes, because otherwise they may have said, okay, I'll go somewhere else because we have a studio that does provide exams. Um, doing exams can help develop a good work ethic and attitude. And as we know as musicians and drummers, having a good work, e work ethic is really important to succeeding can uh, help develop dedication, determination and discipline, endurance and enthusiasm, and a hunger to learn and achieve goals. Uh, these are all essential ingredients for musicians to be successful. Another thing it provides is the ability to cope with nerves. When, in the real world, when you go for auditions or do an important performance or in a recording studio, nerves are a, a, a real factor for many of us musicians. And starting to learn how to train to cope with nerves and perform well when you're under pressure, I think is, a, is definitely a positive for the students. Now, uh, Tony, is there any questions that have come through or been sent through during this session? No, I haven't seen any come through, Mark. I'll just double check. Yep. Is there anyone here? Sorry guys, I'm just checking the... Yeah, no, no. We'll... None? That's fine, okay. So, due to there being no questions that have popped up during this session so far, what I'm gonna do next is just perform a few pieces from the syllabus, mainly with the intention of just showing you what the standard and the levels are for each grade and how it's a very gentle progression from the, the very simple up to the more advanced so I'm going to begin with the introductory level. All right, here we go, this is the introductory level. Very fast. 
basically just quarter notes and quarter rests, really simple stuff to get the little kids started. Yeah. Mark, can you see that up there? It's a Oh, okay. Yeah, all right. So there's a question, someone's written a question about the 25% of the assessment being performance. What was that option called? Okay, so that was called the performance syllabus. Uh, so the standard drum kit syllabus would just be called, uh, say, grade two drum kit, whereas this would be called grade two performance drum kit, is that right, or drum kit drum performance? Kit, drum kit performance. Sorry, drum kit performance. So it's the performance option where there's no site reading or oral tests or technical work or general knowledge, just four list pieces, each piece graded at 25% of the overall mark. So it's drum kit performance examination. And when you enrol the student, that, that's when that matters that you state that you want the performance serious. Now, Mark, could you please announce which size playing field I'm playing? Thank you. Yes, I've been asked to announce which size I'm playing. So which I was that last one, Mark? I just played Solo 7 from the introductory book. From the intro book. book. Yeah, from Solo 7 from the introductory book, which was a list A category for that. Now, uh, if there are any other questions that pop up, Tony, please just let me know and I'll try to answer them. Yeah, this, this next one is from uh, the Volume 1 book. This will be a preliminary grade piece. This is Solo 3, just a basic little rock piece for the preliminary level. That's quite basic, but it is certainly a step up from the introductory level. Now I'll move on to a grade one piece, and this is solo number 18, and this is a shuffle piece. trying to select a few pieces that will express a little bit of variety as well just to show you what's available in the syllabus. Now, moving on to the grade two level, I'll perform solo seven, which is a rock piece. And you'll really, I've chosen this deliberately because I uh, played a preliminary rock piece and you'll see how it just gradually grows and this is certainly a lot more challenging that side inch, yes, preliminary, a lot more challenging than the preliminary section. <laughs> a snare drum solo just to mix up the variety and 
and so this is solo three from break three. It's a little piece in six eight time. Caveman Beast is playing some jungle drums a lot of time. Here we go. solo 13 which just presents a bit of odd time in 7-8 
hearts to give their fun fun tricks. So uh, that's as many pieces as I wanted before in this particular session. Um, if the audio went ballistic at your end, if you really want to see those pieces properly, you could always try clicking on the link that Ansgar has sent you to view this later on um, in your own time. Alternatively, don't forget there's the, the YouTube channel, Drums9842, if any of those solos were of interest, if you want to watch them at a higher quality with the audio, feel free to do that. Now, Tony, were there any more questions that came through? No, there was no more, Mark. I was yep. going to ask everyone if they could just let us know what the sound quality was like. That'll help us for future presentations. Sure. Yep. So, um, I'm sure you have anything else on my list there, Tony. So, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much all from me for this first session today, guys. Um, I want to thank you for showing an interest in, in the ANSCA syllabus and hanging out and doing a bit of drums together. It's always good fun. So I'll hand you over to Tony to close this session off and we'll have a short break and I'll be back on uh, in 15 minutes for the second session, which will delve a little deeper into, you know, things that I've experienced as an examiner and some tips and hints on teaching tactics, etc. So I'll hand it over to Tony. Thank you very much. Thanks, Mark. That concludes the introduction to the ANSCA syllabus session, so I hope you all found it beneficial. Um, and the next session will get more into the, um, the pieces and the nitty gritty of how to prepare for different grades. Okay, thank you, and we look forward to the next one. Thanks. See you soon.